Hello, my name is Brandon Weekly, and today we're going to be talking about asymmetric authentication using Microchip's ECC608 Trust Element. We're going to spend a few minutes defining asymmetric authentication and showing how it can enhance the security of your platform, and then we'll show how to provision this use case on your own ECC608 chip using Microchip's Trust Platform Design Suite software. Before we get started, let's go over the list of things that you will need to both follow along with this demo, as well as program your own ECC608 parts for this use case. Firstly, on the hardware side, you're going to need a laptop or a PC that's running either a Windows or a Linux operating system. You'll also need the CryptoAuth Trust Platform Development Kit, which is available to purchase on the Microchip website. On the software side, there are two free pieces of software you will need to download. The first being our Trust Platform Design Suite, version 2.3.8 or above. And the second is the MPLAB X Integrated Development Environment, version 6.05 or above. Now let's illustrate this idea of asymmetric authentication using a common use case. Here in this example, we have a host PC and then some PCIe accessory that we want to hook up to the motherboard of our PC. And at a high level, the question that we're trying to answer is, can I trust this accessory? The way that we answer this question is by first asking the accessory to identify its manufacturer, then we ask it to identify itself, and based on the information provided there, we can ask it to send an unforgeable signature that we can use to establish the trust we're looking for. So what does that look like? Well, we have this idea of certificates. And when we ask that first question, who's your manufacturer and can I trust them? The accessory is going to send over its signer certificate or manufacturer certificate, which contains the manufacturer public key, which we'll use later, and then the manufacturer's signature, its digital signature. We take that signature and we plug it into an ECDSA verify function or elliptic curve digital signature algorithm with our own root public key on the host side. Now, if this is a manufacturer that we recognize and that we trust, this algorithm is going to pass and then we'll say, okay, I recognize who your manufacturer is and I trust them. Now, who are you? So at that point, the device sends over its own device certificate. That contains the device's signature and then the device's public key. We run another ECDSA verify function and we use the signer public key that we received in the previous step and plug that in with this uh, device specific signature. If that passes, then we say, okay, I know who you are now and I trust you. And then that third step, the host sends over some random challenge to the, to the PCIe accessory. And we want to see if it can sign that challenge properly in such a way that uh, we know it would only have come from that accessory. It does so using its own private key. Now, part of this operation is that the host and the client both have their own private keys, but they never share them with each other. They can sign messages with them or sign operations with them and then send them back and forth between each other. And then this ECDSA allows us to verify whether or not it was actually legitimately signed with that private key without knowing what that private key is. So we send a random challenge. It signed the PCIe accessory signs its response with its own private key. And then we run another ECDSA verify. And if that response was indeed signed with a legitimate private key, then we pass and we now allow the, uh, the client to operate as intended. Now to get started with this demo, I currently have my CryptoAuth board connected to my computer. I have Trust Platform Design Suite open and running, and I have MPLABX installed and updated. Now to get started, here from the TPDS homepage, we're going to click on this Use Cases tab. Now we can filter by asymmetric authentication by clicking here. And then we'll scroll down and here on this Trust Flex card in the center, we're going to click on the use case under ATECC608B. It may take a moment to load, but you should get a page that looks like this. For the sake of this demo, again, we're using this crypto auth board, so I have that selected. And we will get started with the steps in this transaction diagram. The first step, as we've explained, is to generate our certificates or our custom PKI. So I'll click on this number one here. It's going to ask us for organization information. I will just put test. And you can see as denoted by this check mark that the step completed successfully. You can also follow what's going on in this console here on the right. And if you scroll down to the very end of it, 
It will also uh, note that the first step was executed successfully. So now we'll move on to the second one, which is going to be uploading our certificates to the, to the device. It's going to start with the root certificate, so we'll select that. Now we'll ask for the signer certificate. We'll select that one. And finally, the device certificate. And again, we can see here that this second step completed successfully, both on the number and then here on the output here on the right. So now we'll go for the third one. We're going to verify our certificates. That's a quick one. It was nice. It was uh, successful. We'll send our challenge response, which was signed and sent successfully. And then here for step five, we consider our uh, device authenticated. Now that we've set up the use case, we can go ahead and configure the part. So we will click on Trust Platform Design Suite here on the top left. And then we'll navigate over to our Configurators tab. Here we'll find on the TrustFlex card the ECC608 TrustFlex Configurator. We'll click on that. And once this loads, it will show us all of the use cases that are supported by the ECC608. Here with this nice tessellation of hexagons. And we're just going to click on asymmetric authentication. We'll scroll down. And based on the single use case we've selected, we can see the slots that we need to populate with information. So we'll start with slot 10. Here it's going to ask us for information to label our custom certificate. So organization name, I'll just say MCHP for microchip. And we'll say for this example, the device cert is valid for one year. Click verify. Move on to slot 12. It's asking for another custom certificate. So we'll do the same thing, MCHP. Common name, we'll say microchip. And then again, valid for one year. Verify. And now it's going to ask us for a customer root key. So here again, MCHP, microchip. And then we're going to have to either upload a PEM file that contains the key or you're going to need to enter it manually. Here I just have a random key that I generated. That, and uh, this is actually 32 bytes so that we can show what happens if you try to put in a key that is of invalid length. It will go ahead and give you this error, letting you know that we only have 32 of the 64 expected. So I'll just go ahead and paste the same thing in twice. Click verify. And now it accepts my key. So this will this will uh, be my custom root key. You can verify both of these fields and now it should be ready to go. So once you have all that information entered, you can generate your provisioning package. You can uh, generate a, uh, a prototype sample and then uh, it, you can as well generate your production packages. Thank you for watching this video on asymmetric authentication using our ECC 608 trust element. We'll have another video going over the details of how to generate each type of provisioning package. And please check out our YouTube channel for more videos on the different use cases supported by Trust Platform Design Suite.